Today I'm going to show you how to make these really cute Scrabble tile pillows. You will need a pillow, a pillow cover, iron-on transfer paper, an iron, a printer, scissors, and measuring tape. I will list all of the items used in this tutorial below, including brands and price information. You can use any font you want to do this tutorial, but I wanted to find a font similar to the one used on actual Scrabble tiles, so I did a bit of research. I didn't find an exact match, but it looks pretty similar. I'll link the font that I used down below. It's free to download for PC or Mac users. Now you'll need to go into some sort of image editing program. I'm using Adobe Illustrator, but you can get the exact same results in Microsoft Paint or any other basic program. Just select your font, type your letter, and enlarge it. I'm using a J for Julia. I use the largest font that would print on an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. You'll also want to include the corresponding number value. You can look up the number values online. I wanted my Scrabble tile pillow to be completely authentic, so I made sure that I used the same number from the tile. Now here is the important part. Flip your letter so that you have a mirror image of it. Now print your letters out one sheet at a time. Cut out your numbers and letters. This is the most tedious part of the process. You'll get better results if you cut away as much of the white space as possible, so even though it'll take a while, I think it's very worth it. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I wanted to line the letters up in the center. I did this by marking the center with my measuring tape. It's an 18 by 18 inch pillow, so I went in 9 inches from both sides and marked the center with a pencil. Then I placed my letter. If you use a pillow cover, you can iron the letters onto the pillow cover on a flat surface. This might actually be easier than what I did, which was to just iron the letters directly onto the pillow. It was an uneven surface, but I was still able to make it work. Make sure your iron is set not to seam up. This will ruin the iron-on transfer paper. Also make sure that it is set to cotton. The instructions on your brand of iron-on transfer paper may vary from mine, but you typically hold the iron down onto the paper for about 20 seconds. Don't iron back and forth as you would with clothing, just press down firmly. And when you're done, lift all the way up and move to the next spot. Continue until the whole letter is attached. When I did the second pillow, I used my measuring tape to make sure that both letters lined up on the bottom. Again, you don't have to do this, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist and it would drive me crazy if they were crooked. So I also made sure that the numbers were lined up. Your brand of paper may be different, but mine allows for two options. Removing the paper immediately gives a matte finish, but removing the paper after it cools gives it a glossy finish. I didn't want to burn my fingers and I really didn't care about the finish, so I just waited about three minutes before peeling off the transfer paper, and this is the result. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more DIY projects like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.